It's Greg Gamer 34 here. So I'm back um, with a new video recorder. I can draw on stuff. I can highlight stuff. So if I really need to show you guys what's going on, I should be able to do that and express it pretty easily. So I want to go ahead and actually take the time to explain to you guys how this thing works. So this might be broken up into a few different parts of the videos, but I want to at least start go explaining how it works. So let's look here. Let's edit contents. Okay, so this is what we see for our ROM. So you'll notice 8027 is the first instruction. And if you see what's coming out, um, we have an 8 here, then 0, 0, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, which is the 0 in the RAM, and then 0, 1, 0, 0, which is the 2, and then a 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. Uh, yeah, so, oh, here's the 2, yeah, 0, 1, 0, 0, yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, there's that. I can actually, uh, so what, what is this instruction doing, right? That's what we want to find out. Well, the way this works is I messed up my LSB here, so you'll notice all this sloppy wiring to get everything reversed. So the actual number in here it should be coming into the operation. I should be having these three lines right here get moved down to the bottom. So I just had my LSB swapped. And this line gets moved up like that. Um, so yeah, I just had my LSB swapped. So what that what does that do? Well, th that's the number seven. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you'll notice here, this light is off, and this one's on, and um, what does that do? So this is loading a one into our immediate. This is a coming in right here and um, so let me see here should actually say here immediate zero yeah so if we zoom in into into this we can do that by uh, double clicking you'll see that we have immediate zero right here comes in comes in as a value as a 1 and comes out as a 1. So this is the ALU. So I'll just show you that it's passing right through. So we have a 1 coming in right down there. We have 1 coming out right here. So there's the ALU. So back to the execution unit, the one comes through here, gets bus to here, which you'll see this line says it's a value of one, this line says it's a value of one, and here's our registers. So this value is um, data, and we have clock, reset, and then we have zero right, one right, two right, and then we have our reads over here. So you notice the reads or the writes go up there and they also come down here. The, so the writes are hooked up to both registers and the reads are hooked up individually. It gives us a sense of dual read. So that's how I get B out here. Um, so actually since it's writing to register 2 and it's writing a 1 to register 2, we should be able to come in here come up to register 2 and see that there's a well there should be a 1 if we update the clock now there'll be a 1 in there so there's that so what this whole instruction is doing is just loading a 1 into the correct register spot so if we reset everything clear everything um, Yep, there's a one, 
the next thing is loading a one into a different register. This line then comes in and adds one and one together. So I'll show you. This is saying take register zero right here and add it to register one right there and save it to register three right here. So that's what that's saying. Um, so when that actually gets executed, what that looks like, got to come into here. So we have register 1 plus register 2 is equal to register 3. So register 1 has 1, register 2 has 1. You add 1 and 1 together, so we'll check our ALU. We'll zoom out a little bit. Check our ALU. See so that we have 1 and 1 on, oh, down, down here. It comes up and carries over, and we get a 2 as an output. So you see we got a 2. We can go back to our instruction decoder, actually zoom in here. And so we should have a 2 coming through this line. Now a 2 should be being written to register 3. So we come in here, we go to register 3, we update this clock circuit, and we get a 2 being written to register 3. So that's how that works. So let's run through it a few more times. Okay, so now you might be wondering what happens to these last two lines, the 0008 and the 8409. So these are my branching instructions, and 0008 it simply says, hey, do the compare instruction, but do the compare instruction on register 0. So register 0 is non-existent, it always outputs 0. So when you compare register 0 with register 0, you get that they're equal to each other. So all that does is that updates the flag register to say, okay, we'll branch if there's another, if you want to s compare if there's something equal to it. So the next line says branch if equal to line 2. So it says if what was in the flag's register was the flag branch if equal, which it was because we compared two things and they were equal, then it's going to branch to register two or to line two. So that's why right here, if you notice, we come over to the ALU, we'll be doing subtraction. So the ALU over here is on a one. If we come in, we'll see that carry in is on over here and that invert B is on. So it's doing subtraction and it gets a zero as a result with a carry out also telling it that it's equal to. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and clock it. And this line says go ahead this line says branch to line two if what you wanted was the equal to flag. So you'll notice over here this is our decoder for our flags. So right now we're pumping in this data right here, this one. And this one comes in here and turns off this and turns on out here. Comes up and through and, com and XORs with the value out of this. Now the value out of this register, this register gets written by this flag right here, which is branch of equal. So if you see what happens here, branch of equal flag comes, it gets stored to its register. And then if it says, okay, now we want to compare it to see if the branch of equal flag to flag is there. So it compares it using an XOR gate like this. And then if it's not there, then it'll allow the branch to come through via this AND gate. And then it comes through into this logic for the PC to, now, uh, to allow the branch to execute properly. So now if we go to the ROM and we, uh, update this, you'll see it jumps right to line 2. Just like that. And line 2 says add two registers together and save them to a third spot and it does that. So, there it is, doing its thing. I hope that was a better explanation now that I have a better screen recorder and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, don't forget to subscribe.